Allô les amis, ici c'est Plume18 et puis aujourd'hui on joue sans froid Tales of the Werewolves. So sans froid is a game that is set in 1850s Quebec, although at the time it was still called Lower Canada. It wasn't the proper, there was no actual Canada, so it was just this sort of, uh, this, this territory of the British Empire, I suppose. And so we were playing in a little logging village, a population about 400, somewhere in the north of Quebec, and uh, we were playing as a couple of brothers and a sister. Well, the, the two brothers are playable, and you've got Jacques, who is the cunning trapper, and you've got Tijo, who is this huge lumberjacky kind of uh, burly fellow. You can play either one, they have the same mechanics. Joe is better at uh, melee combat and uh, actually has a slightly easier game. Jacques is weaker at uh, melee combat, has to rely more on traps, and so the gameplay with him is considered to be a little bit harder. I've just played through the tutorial. I've got the uh, basics of combat in there, and I've just recently unlocked access to the town of Wolvesdale itself. So I'm going to take a look around and see what kind of upgrades I can get for some money. Uh, we'll go and start at the uh, blacksmith. It would be nice if I could unlock some more traps, perhaps, or new weapons. So it plays as a bit of a strategy, almost semi-tower defense kind of game. There are multiple waves of wolves and werewolves and so on that can attack our house and different buildings like that. Uh, you can defend yourself by using a rifle and using your axe, but also by laying down some traps. So... And this is my first go through the village, so there'll probably be a few of these pop-ups to let me know, so I can click sell, sold at re reduced price, that's to be expected. So right now I'm packing this old pine axe, one dot in, uh, whoops, one dot in damage, one in agility, three in range. I could upgrade to a George White, perhaps, G. White Company Broad Axe. Large iron Canadian style head used mainly to cut up and square trees that have already been chopped down. In skillful hands, it can be transformed to a definite, devastating weapon thanks to a reinforced steel edge, but its short oak handle and relatively poor balance make it a temperamental weapon. So it does two dots of damage and two dots of agility, but yeah, only range one. I actually quite like the reach of my uh, my current old pine axe. Uh, this is only 60 cents. This would be $1.65 for the Forest Queen Felling Axe. Uh, the Michigan Head Axe, reinforced with steel, is made in Upper Canada. Upper Canada would be what is currently known as Ontario, by the Dundas Axe Factory. It's one of the most popular felling axes. Its four-pound head is a nice counterweight, give it good balance, and a straight ash half provides it with impressive reach. While it's not top-of-the-line product, it's simple, reliable, durable axe, and it is a substantial upgrade over my current one. So it's quite tempting to pick up. Before I spend the money, I'm going to cruise around the town uh, otherwise, but I'm very much considering upgrading to the Forest Queen. So what else do we have? We have the, the hotel and saloon. Let's go and take a look at that. Now, I like the art style of the game a lot. Uh, so I, I actually really like the character design in terms of the, the sort of characters. This is not a very expensive game, so I didn't go in expecting too much. Uh, I like the style of the characters. Um, some of the animations are, you know, a little bit weaker, perhaps. Um, and there's not, like, tons and tons of stuff when we actually get to the actual combat stage. You'll see the levels are a little bit bare in a sense, but I love the style of the trees and just the feel of the overall game. They got the theme very, very well executed, which can often be very important. And on top of that, the sound design of the game is incredible. The music and sound effects are top-notch. I simply sat at the opening screen for, like, 5-10 minutes listening to the theme song because I thought it was wonderful uh, throughout the game. It probably will have to be relatively muted in these videos just because of you know YouTube and content ID and copyright things but we'll see what we can do um, the voice acting is not top-notch not quite as good as I would like and um, what I was actually disappointed at is that there weren't more people with just uh, French accents um, they are clearly quite clearly French Canadian voice actors that are trying to sound like anglophones um, and uh, the main characters are Irish immigrants that have moved to Quebec. They're, uh, I can't remember their last name, but it's O apostrophe something. Uh, but they both have French first names, Jacques and Joseph, and the sister is Josephine. So they've clearly been in Canada for at least a couple of generations, so I would accept a, uh, expect a thicker Canadian accent. Also, I want lots of excuse to throw in some French swear swears. So, we can purchase some uh, eau de vie. Produced by distilling blueberries and cloudberries, it can burn the throat of even the heaviest drinkers. People have attributed medicinal properties to eau de vie, saying it prolongs life if you drink small doses regularly. Because of its antiseptic properties, it can also be used to disinfect wounds. So it's a healing potion, plus 100% hit points. Possibly it's a buff, I'm not sure. Apparently I have a little eau de vie in my uh, supply right now, so that's good. We've got spruce beer, brewed ever since the 17th century upon the arrival of the first European settlers. The typical Canadian beverage revives the spirit and stimulates the body of an exhausted man, so that with the first touch of his lips to the effervescent foam, he is instantly perked up. Gives us bonus stamina for 10 seconds. Stamina is used during combat. If you run out of stamina, you move very slowly and can't attack. And we've got some, what, some caribou whiskey? 
traditional Canadian alcohols distilled illegally by hotel keepers to satisfy demands during evening celebrations. Often adulterated and with an extremely high alcohol content, caribou warms and numbs the drinker, giving him a temporary feeling of power. Bonus damage for 30 seconds. Okay, there is another one called, I think it's just Canadian whiskey, which I believe um, gives me like a rage boost or some sort of combat boost and gives me special maneuvers in combat, uh, which none of these seem to be, although maybe it was the caribou actually that I had before. I'm not sure. I seem to have uh, two bag slots going on, and uh, so we're going to return to the village. I'm not going to buy any of that right now. I'll probably go back for that axe. We've also got a general store. Maybe this will unlock new trap types. Oh, more bullets. Yes, because I do have a limited number of bullets. Nine uh, regular bullets and one silver bullet, or holy bullet rather, should be okay for now. I can upgrade to a rifle. So right now I've got the brown best musket which is quite slow to reload and doesn't do a lot of damage. Poor range, poor damage, poor reload, and discretion, so it's quite loud, I think. And so yeah, the Hawk, Hawken Rocky Mountain Rifle. Rifle of choice for hunters and trappers throughout North America, the Hawken Rocky Mountain stands out among muskets for its remarkable range and accuracy provided by the seven grooves in its barrel. On the downside, its flintlock firing mechanism, mechanism is outdated and the round balls have a tendency to jam the barrel after firing several rounds of succession, which slows reloading. So the damage, is exactly the same. The range is triple. Well, it's three dots instead of one. The reload time is exactly the same. The discretion is quite a bit higher, so I think it's probably quieter when firing. And we've also got a wolf fur vest, which gives us, oh, reduces damage by one hit point per hit, which sounds really good. But I think what I'm gonna do is invest in that ax still. Although, is there any more shops? There's the mayor's office, which is currently closed. There's the church, which is closed. And the convent, which allows you to bless some bullets. Also, bless your weapon, but blessing my weapon would cost a dollar, and I don't know if it's permanent or not. I'm not going to bless this axe because I'm going to upgrade to the other one, so... All right, I still like the idea. I thought I turned on anti-aliasing, but it looks like the characters are pretty aliased in these screens. I don't know. All right, give me an axe, and I can sell the old one, too. So we're going to buy the Forest Queen. We're going to sell the old Pine Axe. It's probably fine. The item has no value. I thought it said it had a value of one. All right, well, I guess we'll just hang on to it then. That's fine. So let's go back home, and we're going to prepare for the next night. Oh! Oh, a new tutorial. Okay, let's watch this tutorial together. I didn't have the ability to bait traps yet. Bait. We haven't unlocked all the abilities yet. Bait will delay the enemies who eat it. This icon shows how much time is left before the bait is Very finished. handy. Okay. The more enemies there are eating it, the faster it will finish. Makes sense. Okay, very straightforward. We can combo the bait with various traps, too. All right, so, um, by clicking its icon, where's the village icon? Oh, down there. Excellent. Thank you for helping me out. And so, here is the strategic view you get during the day. During the day, your sister, who is half-possessed by the devil, is able to get some omens that are telling us where the enemies will attack. Looks like this time I'm only going to have one wave to deal with, which is good in a sense, except it does mean they're all going to attack at once. Looks like we're going to have two werewolves, one of which is going to go for the barn. If I lose the barn, I would lose 75 action points. Action points are used to set up traps during this phase. Okay, and then we've got another werewolf, which is going to pop right next to my house. Very resistant to personal weapons, except for the ones that are blessed, so... We don't have enough money. In fact, I'm a little worried that we may have run out of, uh, used up too much money for setting up my traps. And we've also got three wolves, which are going to go to the house and run around this way. So, currently, I only have unlocked the wolf trap, which costs 10 cents to lay down, costs me 20 action points. It does insta-kill wolves and grand wolves, so grand wolves. Um, and for werewolves, it only deals three points of damage to them. Now, werewolves have, I believe, 30 hit points, so a wolf trap is not very effective right now. However, you'll see in a moment, I actually can upgrade these through my skill points. But this is really good for taking care of wolves. It does slow down uh, wolves or werewolves, I think, it traps them for a little bit and then uh, they'll eventually pop out. We must look at the hanging nets. These are free. Uh, they do cost more action points, so it's 20 action points for a wolf trap. A hanging net costs 30 action points to lay down. But the big thing for it, it doesn't auto-trigger. I have to trigger it myself by shooting it with a gun. Well, hopefully, ideally, while enemies are underneath it. Now, you can combo this with potentially the bait, for example, or by simply, if I stand under it and shout, it'll draw enemies there. I can then run away. They will still go to the place where I shouted, um, unless they can see me, for example. And then while they're all under the net, sort of sniffing around there, I can shoot it and do lots of damage. Just 28 points of damage, which is not quite enough to kill a werewolf, although combined with a wolf trap, it would be. But probably at that point, I can just axe them once and kill them off as well. 
We've got a bonfire here, which uses a cool fear mechanic in the game. When you're fighting, wolf, the wolf pack will sort of try to surround you and go around. But they're, you know, they're afraid of humans by default. Werewolves not as much, but the, the wolves definitely. They're, they've got a certain fear level. But as they, they keep circling around you, the, the fear level their fear factor will sort of decrease, or the difference between your fear factor and how afraid they are, or their bravery, I suppose, will decrease, so they will eventually start to move forward, and the braver of the pack will attack first, and so on. Um, and you can sort of gauge that by, by looking at the wolves, and some will start moving forward. By standing near a bonfire, because they're afraid of fire, it will dramatically increase my fear factor, give me substantially more time to rest between attacks, and also reload my weapon, for example. And then, yeah, the bait, which we just saw the video for. So apparently it is free, which is good, and then the... the um, Deployment time, or action point cost, is not too bad either. Let's go ahead and take a look at my character over here. And uh, so, we've got, um, we're going to switch to the new weapon. Keep that in back. Okay, so this backpack is what I'm actually going to be bringing with me on this mission. These represent hotkeys on the bar. And I believe these are just sacks of stuff that I have sitting in my inventory somewhere else. Um, so we're going to have the one bottle of eau de vie, which can, I guess, heal me? Double my hit points? It'll be interesting to see what it does. Exactly. Got the one blessed bullet. I actually don't know how to switch bullets in combat yet, so we're gonna have to uh, see how that goes. And um, yeah, oh, and then the skills. So I got a skill point here. I'm currently level three. Now I can't. I need to be level four before I can start unlocking the next level of stuff over here. But there's a lot of different skills in the game, which I actually didn't re uh, realize going into it. So it looks like I pretty much. Well, I could save the point probably. I did put a point into marksmanship, which increased my reload speed and accuracy uh, considerably, which is good. But I, um, playing Jacques, I'm going to be doing a lot of traps. So what I think I'm going to do, I eventually want to max out all these traps, which hold beasts for up to 25 seconds, and that includes werewolves. And it will do a fair amount of damage. 15 points of damage on werewolves is half their hit points. So I'll probably grab the first rank. So I don't think right now the wolf traps hold anything at all. So by grabbing the first rank... Again, I'd ideally not like to waste my wolf traps on werewolves, but delaying them for 10 seconds may actually be handy. Or, increasing the bonfire. Or, you know, more axe damage. I do want the trap stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up the first level of trapping and call that good. We'll see how that goes. So let's return. And, uh, I think we're going to start the night. Oh, I didn't actually deploy my traps yet. Never mind. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa there. Um, all right, this wolf is a problem because he's so far away. How am I going to deal with this jerk ass? Because they're all going to spawn at once. I may have to do... Well, okay, wolf traps, 10 cents each. I could deploy three wolf traps and just kill all these wolves simply with these traps. And then focus on meleeing these guys. I could set bait underneath the net. Let, let's, as a tentative thing. So let's go and go wolf trap, wolf trap, wolf trap. So all the wolves will be killed by this. Fairly costly, but it's okay. And then what I could do is set up a hanging net. Um, let's click on this guy. So yeah, set up a hanging net kind of there. Um, and put a bait underneath it. Actually, I don't even need the bait. I should just be able to turn around and get him. You know what? Hold on. Let's delete this trap. I might just melee him just from scratch, but no. We'll set up a trap here. That should be enough. I should be able to draw him directly under the trap and just trigger it manually. And then what I'm going to do here for this guy, we're going to also try to kill him with the hanging trap with actual bait underneath this trap. Oh, can I not bait? Can I not actually stack them? It's possible. Drop the bait. Oh, no, they can't be stacked one under another. So the bait can buy me time. All right, well, I may as well spend some more action points. We'll drop lots of bait. Keep this guy busy. And you know what? We'll drop one bait over here to slow this guy down as well. Um, let me make sure it's right on his path. I mean, he'll probably aggro on it regardless but there we go so that'll give me time to adjust to set up uh maybe reload my button action or my uh, my weapon actually do all those things okay let's go ahead and start this mission um start the night so first thing i'm going to do is reload my weapon by holding down control and i can right click to speed up the reload time there's my trap that i want to deal with 
Come on. Okay, already loaded. Good. Oh, scroll with the mouse wheel to select the bullet you want to shoot. Right, because I do have the silver bullet. But I think I can save it. I don't think I'm going to need it right now. Um. Okay, there we go. First wave is about to trigger. I can see the food off in the distance. Prep this. I'll start to see the dots on the thing. Okay, you can see the yellow of the wolves. They should each trigger a trap, which is good. There we go. Mr. Number One, he's coming and grabbing that bait. Bait is being devoured here as well. Oh, wow. It takes forever. You know what? I'm just going to shout... Really? Oh, he's that busy with the bait. I didn't realize it was quite that effective. Alright. Silver bullet. I don't know if it even counts as still being loaded, honestly. Okay, I'm just going to have to wait and be patient, because I don't want to waste my bullet, which I need to trigger this. Go back to normal bullet, just to make sure. He's almost done the bait. No, it's quite uh, lots of waiting. So the shouting is good to draw people in, but it also increases full fa fear factor of wolves. So I guess we're not really going to showcase the fear factor. But I'm playing a Jacques here. He's not meant to be a fighter. Bait's almost done. I might have had enough time to shoot him once and then um, reload. But the reloading time does take a while. Okay, here he comes. There he is. Bam. Uh, switch weapons. All right, I got... Stung once, but that's all right. Okay, let's reload this weapon while I'm waiting. The wolf is on. I think he's eaten one bait. So I can sprint here. So all those other wolves got killed over here. You did get six cents for killing the wolves. Although, I guess it cost me more to kill all the wolves. I was playing a little overly cautiously. It cost me far more to kill all the wolves than needed. I could have just dropped a couple of bait things and then gone and meleeed them. But I wasn't sure how hard this mission would be. I'm curious to see if he'd actually, this guy will go for more than one bait. Okay. We'll go with silver bullet. Again, I don't know if that's actually what's in there or not. We're going to find out how the mechanic works together. So, let's go for the headshot. Okay, well. All right. Groovy. So, um, we're probably in a lot of trouble here. Oh, too exhausted to attack. Move back. Oh, I did that so poorly. Oh, he does have a little bit of fear factor. He still acts a little like a regular wolf. Run. Let's go ahead and drink our potion and see if we can shout the scare him up. Rage. Urgh. Too exhausted to attack. Hang on. Yeah, now he's a little afraid. He's taking a lot of damage. We shouted. We did all those things. I actually have enough to reload here. And it did use the silver bullets, so that's interesting. Bam. Headshot. And that's the last of it. Alright, so probably not very cost effective. But we got her done. Using her fancy new axe. Anyway, there is a taste of this game. I actually find it quite fun. Uh, it comes on sale fairly frequently on Steam, so keep an eye out for it. But if you want a taste of uh, French-Canadian culture and a little bit of Supernatural, take a look at Sans Foi. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.